ウイルスだおいおいまた新しいのが入ってきたっぽいぞえー、ああなんだここああ誰もいないよどういうことだ I love that they present this naive T cell as if it's scared. That's not what naive means. It means that it was made within the bone marrow and it's ready to protect us through our immune system. This is our immune system, these T cells right here. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and guess that these are infections chasing him. I'm not quite sure which these are. They look viral, but let's see. こいつらは元はただの一般細胞さ。ただ感染してしまったらしいな。All right, so the influenza virus. That's our typical flu that we see each season. Now, a lot of people like to say that the flu is not a big deal. It's a huge deal. There's over half a million flu deaths worldwide. Something along the lines of anywhere from 30 to 50,000 deaths here in the United States each season. Millions of people affected, and the way that it affects you is really something cool. I hope they show it in the show. It's going to be about the literally the flu virus jumping in, hijacking your own cellular machinery to help it replicate within your body and infect you. That's why it's like a zombie apocalypse going on right now. Influenza virus, 感染症であるインフルエンザを引き起こすウイルス A 型 B 型 C 型に大きく分類され38度以上の発熱頭痛関節痛筋肉痛などの症状 That is true that headaches, fevers, muscle aches are the most common symptoms. Now, the influenza virus does affect both the upper and lower respiratory tract, so you can develop a very serious cough as well as a sore throat, serious nasal congestion. The most common way my patients describe it is usually like they've been hit by a train because the fatigue and body aches and fevers are so uncomfortable. That's really the hallmark symptom that you get with the flu. What happens when the virus actually enters your body? It enters through a locking key mechanism, enters the cell nucleus, which is sort of the brain of the cell, and starts hijacking the cell's own machinery to Copy itself and then infect the rest of the body. Now, your body's defense system, like this neutrophil and the T cell here, as well as B cells and macrophages, they all jump in in defense of your body to try and eliminate this virus. But here's where it gets tricky your own cells are infected with this flu virus. So these macrophages actually have to eat your own body's cells in order for you to get better. And as you can already tell where I'm going with this, if they have an overreaction, especially in severe influenza cases, that could be lethal on its own, where your own body's inflammatory process that's meant to protect you actually harms you. Well. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh, the macrophage is here. So, the macrophage, I think macro, this is like a Greek term. Macro means big, phage or phago means to eat in Greek. So, it's literally a big eater where it eats up the virus or infected cells by the virus. And there's actually two types of macrophages one that causes destruction and an inflammation, which is good to fight the virus. Then there's a second type of macrophage that actually causes tissue repair. Whoa! <laughs> The macrophage itself, when it consumes a part of an infected cell, it's able to tell the other parts of the immune system, like the T cells and B cells, of what kind of virus is infecting the body. That's really important in cell mediated immunity, where your body can actually create a memory so that if you're infected with this virus again, your body knows how to combat it. B When we're talking about the different types, the influenza A, B, and C, A is really the most dangerous because it has the most pandemic potential, meaning that it could spread and cause serious harm. In fact, the major outbreaks like the Spanish flu of 1918,、uh, swine flu, avian flu, those were types of influenza A that were devastating on populations. With this patient slash imaginary body having influenza B, It's a little bit easier. 
俺たち小さい子が皆殺しにしてやるぜはあはナイーブ<笑>また他のやつにやってもらったんかああいつになったら一人前になんだよああそれでもお前は俺たちと同じ小さい子か This is the most bullying I've ever encountered in a workplace setting. This looks like a toxic environment to work in. This is really interesting. So, the infected cells, remember, are actually hijacked by the influenza virus, therefore, producing more infected cells or infected particles of the virus that then infect other cells. What's really interesting about the influenza virus is that scientists have recently found out that it's able to hide itself from our own immune system. And we're trying to make strides in figuring out how it does that, not only for us to be able to counter the influenza virus better, but also learn about how it is we can protect ourselves from. Our own immune system when it's overactivated. Think about those individuals who suffer from autoimmune disorders where their own immune system affects their intestines, their skin, like Crohn's disease or psoriasis. If we can figure out how the influenza virus hides from the, our immune system, we can use that same principle to shut down the autoimmune issues that we can have. <laughs> oh no, it's infecting other cells. One of the crazy parts about having influenza is you may be infected with it and spreading it up to 24 hours before you even feel symptoms. So think about it I could be totally fine, meaning not showing any symptoms, sneeze, and be passing the influenza virus to someone right next to me. Really problematic, right? <laughs> Whoa! I think it's a Dragon Ball Z character. There we go. B cell. So, just so you understand the whole process of this, when pathogens enter the body, they're labeled as antigens, and they're recognized either by the T cells or B cells, and then your body creates antibodies to fight off these antigens. Now, you actually have memory B cells in your body, which remember past viruses that you've been infected with and have already an immune response ready for it. For example, if you get two vaccinations for the measles shot, like you're supposed to, you have immunity for pretty much the rest of your life, like 98% immunity. If you get chickenpox, Once in your life, you have enough antibodies for the rest of your life. So, the way that this works is your body gets infected, your immune system recognizes it, it fights it off, but also catalogs the infection to know what to do if it returns in the future. <laughs> So an important part of your immune system is actually raising the core body temperature, which is called a fever, but it's actually important for your body to be able to fight off infections. Not only does your immune system in certain cells function better when the temperature is higher, but the virus has trouble replicating when the temperature is higher, so it decreases its effectiveness and spread. Also, B cells release cytokines, which actually facilitate the inflammatory process, helping your body rid itself of the virus. But Those cytokines, those inflammatory cells, actually increase your body's temperature. That's part of their roles. The reason your body has a sneeze and cough reflex is to rid itself of a lot of these pathogens. The way that actually they enter your body is usually from respiratory droplets being in the air, or if you touch some of them that have landed on a solid surface and then introduce them by rubbing your eyes, nose, or mouth. That's why we always say our fingers are the dirtiest parts of our bodies and we have to wash our hands. Now, you heard me say chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions, but I think nowadays we should be saying, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> Yeah! 
This is such a great picture of like the war-torn city. It's something that I oftentimes try and explain to my patients that come in because they have a lingering cough even once the infection is cleared. This happens all the time. It's called a post-viral cough or post-viral tussle, tussle syndrome. Really what happens is you have a war between an infection and your body's immune system. Now your body's immune system has won the war. You're no longer infected, you're no longer contagious. But think about the battlefield, and the battlefield is your airway. It's severely inflamed, just like what was uh, visualized right there in the city. It takes time to heal all of that. What happens when your airway's damaged? Your body secretes mucus, you don't feel good, it feels difficult to fall asleep, you cough even though you don't have an active infection. So it takes time to calm the body's immune system, it takes time to heal. That's why it's no surprise if you've had a serious flu infection that one to two weeks later you're still feeling run down. Your body's healing. He's not going to be able to. Aha! Uh -huh. Because he didn't have help from his naive T cell or macrophage to tell him how to fight this virus. But the B cell. It's a new virus. <gasps> Influenza. 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 So this requires the immune system cascade to start all over again with the neutrophils, the macrophage, the presenting cells, the memory cells. Everything has to start from scratch. You can't just reuse the same immune reaction that you had to one virus for the other one. Sometimes there's crossover, but not every single time. This is why we still recommend that if you have a flu during a season but haven't gotten your flu shot, once you get better, you can still get the flu shot and get benefit from it. The biggest difference we see with the influenza virus and other viruses that are circulating right now, I don't wanna say the name because I'm gonna get demonetized just for saying it once, but for the flu, we have an influenza vaccine that not only prevents it in a certain percentage of the time, but also if you are to get the vaccine and still get sick, you'll have a milder course. But the biggest thing is we have an antiviral medication that is FDA approved to treat and prevent the spread of the influenza virus. It's called oseltamivir, and we use it quite regularly in my practice. Actually, if there's a nursing home where you have an outbreak of the flu, we can proactively, prophylactically treat patients who are healthy to not get sick. Now, if there's another virus, one that's going around right now, still don't wanna say it, we don't have those tools, it can be quite lethal. So we wanna act smart, and the way we do that is we wash our hands to limit the spread. We don't touch our face to limit the spread. If we're sick, we stay home. If we see someone sick, we try and stay far away from them. And most importantly, we stay alert, not anxious. I put together a playlist for you guys of some informative videos about some viruses that are circulating right here. Hope you enjoy them while staying happy and healthy.